Hi, this is Glenn Doreen, Electronics Editor of Consumer Reports, and we are at CES 2014 with our tablet and laptop expert, Donna Tappellini, and uh, Mike Gikas, who is our phone expert, and we're going to be talking through some of the trends that we've seen here at the show today. Let's start with you, Donna. Um, you wrote a piece about the uh, press conferences and how actually they're sort of full and full of fluff and vigor, but some of them have lacked some considerable substance. Talk to me about that. Yeah, not a lot of substance. I was kind of disappointed. I was at Intel, for example, yesterday, and uh, they usually put on a good show. One of the things that they that they sh demonstrated was um, talking to a computer and saying, where can I find some hummus? And I thought, well, I could do that with Siri for years. Yeah. So that was, that was a little bit disappointing. And there so were a lot so, so uh, queuing us into the future that happened two years ago, right? Something like that, yeah, yeah. Um, well, there, there was, of course, uh, we won't get into it too much, but there was, of course, a little bit of drama at the uh, Samsung press conference, right, where Michael Bay... Yeah, something went wrong with the teleprompter, and Michael Bay just kind of took off. Um, but, the, you know, the, the, the biggest the problem... The internet has apparently piled on poor Michael Bay, so they, we, won't, we, won't, we won't continue the trend. We, w we won't get on him anymore, but, but the, the problem was more kind of like, look, here are some famous people, and let's, let's trot them out, but... No, no, a lot of them didn't say anything of substance. I was waiting to see what are you, what are you showing us? What are you here to talk about? And do you think, it, do you think people break out the celebrities when they don't have something substantive to say? Is that? Well, I mean, yeah, why not a dentist? You know, <laughs> and how it, how that television saved his life, or allowed him to charge more per root canals, or something. <laughs> Uh, I mean, so, so in in terms of the uh, the you know non sequitur people that they could bring up there, um, having celebrities probably not be uh, uh, not only not only dramatically negative for Samsung this year, but uh, but not necessarily helpful to the message at all, right? Maybe, and I mean they did they did come out with some interesting products, for example. The, yeah, talk the, to me talk to me about the the, the, t the tablet space in particular. It's obviously it's. It's such a hot market right now, but it's almost at that sort of technological maturity. Uh, what what is left to introduce here? Right. Well, the, I mean, what I've seen with tablets in this in this show so far, they kind of run the gamut. They go from a budget tablet from Acer for one hundred and fifty dollars that actually looks pretty nice, mm -hmm. up to the Galaxy Note Pro that Samsung introduced yesterday, um, which runs KitKat four point four, uh, and it is really kind of uh, launched as a productivity tool. Interesting, meaning like it's that close to a laptop. It is that close to a laptop. It's got a 12.2 inch screen, which is probably the biggest tablet that we've seen yet. Yeah, in fact, there you, we, we saw a lot of sort of hybridized laptop-y, tablet-y things. That's been a trend that's been going on for a couple of years. There was a new one at the uh, Asus conference, right? They, they launched, what was it, the Transformer? The tra it was the Transformer Book, Book Duet. Duet, oh yeah, we've been, we were having a little trouble with that name before, remembering that name, right? Yeah, it's kind of long. from the Duo to the, the Duet, and they, they God knows what the next name is going to be, but, but what does it do? What does the Duet do? It, it's, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a tablet that is, it's a Windows tablet, but it's also an Android tablet. Um, and it, it, the interesting thing is it's an Android tablet that runs on a um, Intel processor, a core processor. It is interesting, they don't need two processors to do it, right? Right, and it's gonna give them a lot more, it's gonna give that, I think it's gonna give that Android tablet a lot more power than a lot of other Android tablets have. Interesting, uh, so Mike, there's been, the, in fact, that very same Asus press conference had a, uh, had a phone that becomes a tablet, and there's this weird sort of continuum with a lot of overlapping products where one thing stops That's the right. other and becomes the other. What, what, what was well, your take on the Asus tablet? Right, it was called the, wait, it was called the... The, 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 uh, the, uh, the Pad Phone Pad X. Pad Phone X, Well, the, right, it's yeah. a two-part thing. The phone itself is a five-inch screen phone. A pretty a decent smartphone with uh, the usual, you know, the things you expect, an HD display, NFC, and some other wireless uh, advantages. But what makes it special is its accessory, which is a nine-inch screen uh, tablet-like device with a, uh, with a, with a high-capacity battery. And what you're supposed to do is plug this phone into the, to the dock of this thing and presto, have a tablet. Uh, it's an interesting concept, not, not yeah, a novelty, like novelty or useful? Uh, at this point, well, it's, it's definitely novel. How useful it remains to be seen because it has a problem that other such devices have had. I mean, uh, we've seen uh, a, a, a phone a couple of years ago, the Atrix, that tried with an attachment tried to become a laptop. I remember that. And besides the clunkiness, that didn't do too well, did it? The problem is both items tend to be expensive, and yeah. so you end up with one of the devices, the the tablet part, being a uh, you know when it doesn't have the phone plugged in, 
It's just a big screen with a battery, yeah. and do you want to lug that around? Yeah, if, I, if I recall with the Atrix, there was this problem where if you put the phone and the tablet and the and the you know laptop accessory together, it was far more than just buying a laptop. And you right. Up, and, and when you have to do the math, and it, it was not, work. it wasn't as good as a laptop. And actually, the phone wasn't that great. But let's let's give uh, let's say the phone is excellent. The bottom line is, and Donna's covered this, you can get a pretty good tablet that a fully functional tablet that works well with your phone for about two hundred dollars or more and a pretty decent phone for a hundred dollars so if and but the good news is they're both they both work independently yeah. and they can sync why would anybody want something that may cost as much or more when one of those devices is just not going to function? And characteristically, there was no pricing information on this. Right, uh, which I, sus I, su I suspect it's be some embarrassment. Through AT well, if you right? recall, that happened also when uh, they first, I believe, well, when, at least when they rolled out the uh, the Galaxy, the Galaxy Gear, that very high-end smart uh, watch that only worked with Samsung's Note 3. The Note 3 cost three hundred dollars, and then we eventually found that the Gear, which was an interesting device, also cost three hundred dollars. And only, but without the without the Note, it was just a very dumb smartphone. It's not a very good. It's just a watch. A and time and, and maybe a, oh, it had a camera, but three hundred dollars for that. Uh, sure, sure. So maybe maybe one, one of the does problems. Come down to pricing. You're right. Maybe one of the problems is when these gadgets try to be everything to everybody, and they just try to put too much into one thing. You have a laptop, maybe you have a tablet, you have a phone. So, so, so what about everything all so, the time? What about the opposite proposition, the super simplified tablet Chromebooks? There have been a few Chromebooks out this year, and every year, uh, I, I, we should make this a standing question every year, is this the year the Chromebook finally takes off? I don't know if it's the year the Chromebook takes off. We're planning to test Chromebooks, so we'll that's, see how well they do. That's a good, yeah, well, well but, but now what are they supposed, what is the proposition? To, just sort of talk us through, what's the, what is the idea behind the Chromebook well, it's a with simple, a normal laptop? It's a simple operating system. You don't have to put applications on it. You don't need a Word application or whatever else. And it's so long it, as you live within Google's universe, right? It, That's exactly. Right. And the, you know the big selling point that a lot of the Chromebook makers uh, make, and also Google, is that it's quick boot up. Just turn it on, and there so, it is. So is a tablet. You're right. Uh, well, so, but what do we think of the Chromebooks? Uh, did, did you get a good look at any of the Chromebooks yet, or, um, or, or, or are those still remain to be seen today? Um, I saw a couple. I saw one from Acer this morning, and I saw um, one from uh, Toshiba. And I mean, they, you know, they're interesting. It's just you have to be willing to work in that universe. So, uh, another thing that I know that you're going to go out and take a look at today. We're still in the middle of the show here, so you're going to go out and take a look at today is the um, some of the wearable technology mm -hmm. out there. Um, it's it's interesting. There seems to be a lot of momentum this year. Why, why is that? What's what's driving that? Do you know? Well, hopefully something even better than my Fitbit. I don't know. We'll have to find out. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things out there that they're, they're either something like this that you wear on your wrist and it kind of tracks your activity. Um, it also sounds like there are things that are kind of outside of yourself that you're going to be interacting with that'll, that'll also give you some uh, indication of what you're up to in terms of fitness and health. So there's a lot out there. We'll see how people take to it. Yeah, in fact, that... And, and I, I thought it was interesting that it seems that Pebble, uh, one of the early sort of pioneers in this space, I'm wearing one, no endorsement whatsoever. It's just that you wouldn't be the, sitting there if you weren't wearing that. Yeah, exactly. It's the it's it's the it, it is both a uh, wonderful device and one that is constantly bothering me with all the messages that I <laughs> that I'm supposed to be uh, returning. But they're now focusing. Their big announcement this year was that they're actually doing some sort of a stainless steel version of it. So. So is that one of the next steps for wearable technology, to just make it look good? It's interesting that there's a lot of technology does focus on design, but never it's never more important than something that you put on your body, right? It's a piece of decoration. Well, have you seen people walking around with Google Glass? So yes. it's an interesting concept, but they don't look so good. What's so. the statement right. there? Yeah. 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 And they have no friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, that, I think that's important. Uh, I mean, that's my, my opinion. I know I don't, I don't test them, but until they start looking more elegant, I think people do care about what they put on their skin. Uh, you know, you're wearing earrings. I mean, you want something that's going to look fashionable. Smart earrings? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, something that can whisper in your ear. Hey, you might be on Sweet nothing. They'll call them sweet nothing. You heard it here right? first, folks. <laughs> so, uh, another thing, I wanted to jump to another thing that we've been seeing at the show. Um, there's there are a couple phones that, this is not typically the place where you see phones launched um, phones the big phones tend to sort of make their own gravity as I like to say they they you know Apple does their own events Samsung now does huge events around their phones Microsoft does big events around their phones so 
you'd expect them to sort of get lost at CES, but we actually have seen one or two interesting uh, phones. Yeah, actually, year. three phones that take a, an interesting approach. Um, there's some trends that have been developing in the past year. Some of them we think are very useful. One thing, it's one thing. For sorry, by the way, we should explain. We're getting to the props on the table. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Listen. Uh, one of them is protecting the phone from its user, uh, <laughs> or more importantly, protecting the, the user's wallet. As you know. Uh, there are lots of things that can go wrong with a smartphone, usually a cracked screen or uh, God knows what. Let's do it. Sure. Uh, Wait, you actually changed some menu items. Well, That's interesting. That, there's something interesting about this phone. Okay, so this is this is the this is Sony's Xperia Z1, and uh, last year they introduced a water-resistant phone. This one they say is waterproof. I think the only significant difference is instead of three feet, so you can submerge it in three feet of water. I'm sorry, this one you can submerge in five feet of water instead of three feet for a half hour. But they've also you made can the take screen. a phone call while snorkeling. Well, you can actually. They say that the screen will react well even when your fingers are wet. But the, the most important things. I mean, if you don't want to be an undersea explorer and shoot your family in the pool, take pictures you shouldn't perhaps. The important thing is, if water damage is one of the main reasons people ask Consumer Reports, should I or should I not get uh, insurance? And we still say, despite you know the risk, it's it's a if you get your phone wet, it's dead, it's gone, and it's never covered under warranty. Even with that, we usually tell people it's usually not a good uh, insurance is not a good deal. So this so there's just, some value in the there's in tremendous the value. I know they're marketing it's not just the kind of novelty. No, not at all. Another one, I wish I had the phone here. LG introduced uh, their LG G Flex, the LG G Flex. Yeah, we're actually going to be getting our hands on that a little, little, little Yeah, later I, I was trying to get one here today, but its its claim to fame is it has a curved screen. It's slightly banana shaped, but it's flexible. Not only the screen, but the phone is. And uh, once you get through playing with it, it says, look, I can flatten this phone and bend it, you realize it solves another problem. Sitting, uh, sitting on your phone? Yes, the sitting on the phone. You know, when you turn the... Uh, Which is not, yeah, the it's not a total way. joke, right? It's, it's a, not a joke. And it's, again, it's another one that's uh, popular, you know, that gives the warranty people a chuckle when you bring the phone back. Yeah, it's, worth, it's worth mentioning. There's a lot of curved stuff at the show. For some reason, uh, I think somebody in, in engineering, somebody, somebody in the engineering departments of uh, LG and Samsung learned how to curve screens, and now it's all over the place, right? Right. So the curve is there to give it some help to help it cover your cheeks, whichever it is, the one on your face or yeah. another part of your body. The other the other advantage they, they are, they're touting is they say that giving the phone a curved shape, I wish I had here, would bring the, the phone, the microphone and earpiece closer to your ear and mouth. So they, they're claiming better voice quality. And also, this we can, we can confirm that because the screen is uh, it's shiny, but it, because it's curved, you'll probably have less of a problem with glare. But, so, uh, oh, so that might be a reason for a curved tablet because I'm sitting here wondering right. why the would I need last, a curved tablet? No, when's the last time you sat on your tablet? Well, maybe. I mean, well, well no. but the funniest <laughs> reason they gave for the curved screen is citing their bigger cousins. Uh, you know, they, they, we've seen curved screen televisions, and I'm sure there are wonderful advantages there. But uh, they claim it'll give you an immersive uh, experience. Now, this is a six-inch screen, so uh, you get a, I guess, a cinema scope or IMAX like. Uh, Experience. So you we tried it the other day. What did yeah, you think? Yeah, no, I was it was underwhelming. I was just looking at a curved screen phone, and I realized, my God, there aren't going to be too many accessories for this. So, so how close do you have to get it to your face before it's a truly a way, right? Like this? So, so <laughs> goggles, and, right? And if you actually, bring, no, I've solved it. The snorkel phone. They actually could make it curved, make it watertight, and then you can talk at it while right. you're underwater. And if you tap it, it'll give you the listing of local optometrists or something. <laughs> but. Uh, that's probably the most dubious claim, but I think the curve is here to stay. But the, again, the most useful thing about this phone is that it's able to withstand the abuses of their their owners. I mean, you mentioned uh, so, but you mentioned three phones. What's the third? What's oh, the third, the one, third that, one. We were talking earlier about uh, smartphones and tablets are they have there's a lot of overlap and they're trying to define their their role in, in today's world. Like at, at what point do they hand off? It looks like that point is the six inch screen. Now, we've seen several phones, including that the Flex that we're talking about, that have six inch screens. And while we appreciate the better uh, ex multimedia experience or when you're reading, it does hamper the ability of, of the phone to be handled with one hand. And that's a tremendous disadvantage because that's one of the main reasons smartphones are popular. It's a computer that's very portable and compromises the portability. Uh, that's one way to address it. Another way to address it is what Asus did with their, uh, what do they call it, the, um, the, oh, the pad phone? The pad oh, phone, yeah, yeah, right. The, the one with that before, I think. 
Right, and uh, so it's an interesting idea at the very least, right. whether the execution and the pricing goes, it goes follows, you know, actually makes sense. But I a big think question right mark. now, I mean, Donald, would you say that I think people are very happy with a good smartphone and a good tablet. I don't see this this need that I want to shove I'm, one inside the other. Well, the right? scenario they paint, right, the show, I'm starting an email on my phone, but I'm moving to a larger screen, and but I don't, I don't know how often that happens, but. So it's, po it's possible that basically the only innovation left in these spaces is just to start combining them? Is that is that a possibility? Well, no, but there's already a synergy between, especially when you're talking about smartphones and tablets from the same maker, they already have apps that help you sync what you're doing yeah, with they, each other. They use the cloud so, for that, right? Exactly, the cloud and with each other. There's wireless sharing technologies. Uh, um, I mean, we first saw this with Amazon's Whisper Sync, right? You start mm -hmm. reading a book on one platform, it knows where you left off. You're seeing a lot of that on on mobile devices everywhere. So that argument is very weak. And, and it's again, the same with, sorry Mike, it's the same with tablets, TVs, computers, but it all connects. So really, why do you need one thing that does everything? That's a good it's point. It's kind of so hard one, to I think Don is bringing up one, a very good thing point, about thing. all of these devices, television, from the from a large screen television to, to, a, to a smartphone, is that they are now becoming second fiddle to what people really want for them which is access to their digital selves online and the, the apps on them. The content, the, their, right. own persona, their own personal stuff online, and basically these things are just conduits. And yes. there's only so much you know, window dressing you can put around a screen, right? And right, and now they're kicking and screaming their way to becoming a commodity, introducing some maybe frivolous, uh, you know, some, some features that people haven't asked for. Perhaps maybe the curved screen won't, won't take off, but it's very clear now, you know, the big hurdles regarding smartphones have been conquered. That is, fast data connections, a large enough screen. Once we cross the four-inch uh, threshold, we were okay with that. I mean, there, I mean, there's a nice, perhaps the, the ideal screen size would be somewhere between four and five inches for most people. So, um, and so hopefully, well, maybe we might see a shake out in the near future. Let, let's, let's, let's wrap yeah. it up with a bottom line here, though. So, Donna, have you, you seen anything at the show that you think is the true compelling thing for consumers that they should really run out and buy this now? Or have you seen, or conversely, have you seen anything that is an absolute warning, this is a problem? I haven't seen, you know, I, I would put myself right in the middle there. Not, not a big game changer, nothing really awful. Just products that run, like I said earlier, they run the gamut from budget to higher end. And you, have, you, know, you have to think to yourself, do I want Windows, do I want Android, do I want Apple? and make a choice for And then there. once you've made that choice, you can pretty much find a variety of products. One right. of them's gonna be right for you. Right. Uh, what about you, Mike? Anything anything game changing? Um, well, one thing, I, because Samsung and LG are highly competitive in whatever one announces, so I'm looking for, the, the Flex Phone has a very promising uh, feature, the, the, the resilience to, you know, that you can bend it. So I'm looking for Samsung, they didn't tell me anything, but I'm imagining a Galaxy S5 that they'll call maybe the Acrobat, the S Acrobat, <laughs> that will outdo it in, in, in durability. But for most people, what's being true now, I think is because the, the improvements are incremental, I think right now, getting look taking a hand-me-down approach to making your cell phone purchase, the Galaxy S3 is still a great phone and you can get it for free. I think that's gonna be the way most people should approach uh, buying phones. Unless you want the absolute latest and greatest phones that can read your mind, do your laundry, or something else that we haven't thought of. Uh, maybe last year's model or the model from six months ago will be just fine and you'll get it at a price you like. So, lots of cool new ideas and technology, maybe none of which you're going to actually need, but we'll keep an eye on the curved screens. Uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, take and uh, frankly, we'll, need we'll be to. pouring water on all of our uh, phones from now on to see whether or not they can do that. Um, so. If you want more information uh, from CES, please check out consumerreports.org slash CES, and uh, we'll come back to you soon with more coverage. This accessory is free, by the way. <laughs>